Hey, how's it going? And welcome back to Consuming Cinema, a show about making and pairing food and drinks from popular movies and TV shows. Today we're making a banana daiquiri with canapes from The Godfather, Part 2. Let's get started. If you haven't seen The Godfather Part 2, it's a 1974 Francis Ford Coppola sequel set primarily 10 years after the events of the first Godfather, which chronicles now Don Michael Corleone as he expands the power of the Corleone family crime syndicate, while simultaneously intercutting with flashbacks of his father Vito's rise from orphaned Ellis Island immigrant to burgeoning vengeful crime lord. The world of the second Godfather is much different than that of the first, as we open in Nevada, where Michael is hosting a party for his son Anthony's first communion. There we see Frank Pentangeli, a character created because they couldn't afford to cast the actor who played Clemenza, whose sauce we made in the last episode you can watch here. In the scene, Pentangeli greets Michael's older brother Fredo, and complains to him about the quality of food at the party. Hey, what's with the food around here? What's the matter? Kid comes up to me in a white jacket, gives me a Ritz cracker and a chopped liver, he's just kind of peas. I said, uh, uh, can I pays my ass? That's a Ritz cracker and chopped liver. <laughs> Later, Michael goes to Cuba to do business with Jewish mobster and associate of Pentangeli, Hyman Roth. There, he's met by Fredo, and the two go to a bar where Fredo orders himself a drink. Uh, por favor. How do you say banana daiquiri? Banana daiquiri. That's it. That's it. Uh, uno banana daiquiri. But before we can make our banana daiquiri and canapes, we first need to make a banana syrup for our banana daiquiri. So we'll start by peeling two bananas and break them up into chunks, putting them in a container that you can seal, reserving the peels for a little later. Then we're going to add a half a cup of demerara sugar. If you can't find that, regular sugar will work just fine. Then we're going to add back our banana peels and top it off with a bit more of that sugar. Now add two ounces of water or whatever will fit in the container in my case. Then we're going to cover this and let it sit for at least three to four hours, but no longer than overnight. And four hours later, we'll see that a natural syrup has already formed from the sugar reacting to the bananas. So we will remove the banana peels and discard them. Then we are going to transfer the rest of this mix into a small saucepan, where we'll add a quarter teaspoon of salt, as well as a quarter teaspoon of vanilla extract, and one cinnamon stick, broken in half. Then we are going to bring this to a boil and let simmer for 5 to 10 minutes, stirring frequently, until you have this beautiful smelling banana goop. Now we're just going to fish out these cinnamon sticks, and then we'll strain and funnel this mixture into a bottle. Now you're going to want to gently press down on this mash to allow all the good syrup to get strained through. I ultimately switch from a spoon to a meat masher in order to extract as much syrup as possible. Then we're going to cap that bottle and refrigerate until we're ready to make our cocktail. Now we're going to get started on a spread for the first two of our three canapes, which starts in a bowl, to which we'll add a whole packet or eight ounces of cream cheese. Next, we're going to add the zest and juice of one lemon, followed by a whole bunch of dill, finely chopped, as well as a tablespoon of Dijon mustard. Now we're going to add two tablespoons of creme fraiche, or as South Park's Randy Marsh would call it, cream fraiche. Oh yeah. Ugh. Followed by a teaspoon of salt, as well as a teaspoon of freshly cracked pepper. Now we're going to mix this all together, but as I did, I realized that this mix needed two more tablespoons of cream fraiche. Cream fraiche! Cream fraiche! Now mix it all together until it reaches a smooth, creamy consistency. Now I'm just going to add a little more pepper to taste and mix it up again. Now we're going to cover this and set it aside while we prep the bread for our first set of canapes. Both this spread and the bread will be used to make two different types of canapes. So we'll start with a half a loaf of rye bread. This kind from my local bakery was pre-cut into thin slices, which is exactly what we need. Then we're going to take a few of the slices and put them on the plate. Then we're going to use a small round pastry cutter to cut circular pieces of rye bread out of these larger pieces. I started getting two circles out of each slice, but ultimately realized I was able to get three out of each. And with the leftover bread, just have yourself a delicious little snack. You deserve it. And you're going to want about 20 of these circular slices for the two sets of three canapes we'll be making. The first of which begins with an English cucumber, which you'll peel and then cut into half inch thick slices, which should be around the same size as the rye circles. Now we're going to spread some of that dill mixture onto each of the rye breads. You want to make sure it's a relatively thin, even layer. Now do the same for the other pieces of rye you plan on making into the cucumber canapes. To make the canapé, we are first going to use an even smaller pastry cutter to poke a hole through the center of each cucumber slice. 
so you have a nice circle which you will place on top of each rye. Then do the same for the other cucumbers as well. Now I'm going to fashion together a homemade piping bag using a Ziploc bag and a cup which I'm going to fill with our dill mixture. Then using that piping bag we are going to fill the centers of the cucumbers like so. Next we're going to garnish with a little sprig of dill on each canapé and repeat the same process for the other canapés, and then we're going to refrigerate these while we work on our next set of canapés. The next batch of canapés will use the same spread and rye breads, but this time we'll incorporate smoked salmon. So just as we did before, smear a little bit of our spread onto each rye circle, then we're going to wrap the salmon around our finger which I sort of failed to get on camera, and attempt to place them on each rye bread in the shape of a flower. Then for each of these canapés, garnish with a caper as well as a tiny sprig of dill. Repeat the process for the rest of the salmon canapés. Do your best to replicate the flower look for each piece of salmon, and then repeat the same garnish of a caper and some dill. Now we're going to refrigerate these while we work on our third and final set of canapés. This time we'll be using a loaf of Italian bread, which we'll cut into half inch slices. And we're also going to need some softened butter as well as some prosciutto. But while I was attempting to do a nod to the godfather with the Italian bread, I actually recommend using white bread for this version because I actually did this process wrong in that I made the sandwich first and attempted to cut it with a pastry cutter which was a massive failure but another delicious snack. What ended up working was using the pastry cutter as a guide and then cutting the bread with a knife. I then buttered each slice of bread individually and folded a small piece of prosciutto on top completing the sandwich this way. So repeat this same process with the rest of the bread, the butter, and the prosciutto. And once you have completed these canapés it's now time to garnish them with little slices of olives and cornichons. So using some toothpicks, skewer the olive and cornichon slices onto each toothpick and then stick the garnish through the center of each canapé. And once you're done it's now time to refrigerate these canapés while we make our banana daiquiri, which starts in a blender, to which we'll add one ripe banana that we'll break into pieces and put in the blender, along with two ounces of rum, as well as an ounce of banana liqueur. I recommend this Giffard's, in addition to one quarter ounce of overproof rum, which isn't totally necessary but I love the banana funk that this Ray and Nephew brings, followed by a dash of Angostura bitters, along with a half an ounce of lime juice, and last but certainly not least, one ounce of our banana syrup, and then add about a cup and a half of crushed ice to your blender, and blend for 15 to 20 seconds. Now it's finally time to plate, so we'll first set down our cucumber canapes, followed by our salmon and prosciutto, which we'll arrange in an alternating order, and finally we'll pour our banana daiquiri into a hurricane glass, to which we'll add a straw. And I attempted to garnish with a cherry sitting on top like the way Fredo's daiquiri looked in the movie, but unfortunately, just as Michael did with Fredo, gravity had other plans for this cherry. So I simply garnished with a cherry on a skewer instead, and at long last, your banana daiquiri with canapes is finally complete. Now there's nothing left to do but to taste it. So we'll start with one of our cucumber canapes, as well as one of the salmon variety, and of course a prosciutto canapé as well. All of these canapés are fresh, light, but still sufficiently filling hors d'oeuvres that would make an outstanding appetizer at any party, whether it's your son's first communion or a New Year's Eve party where your brother betrays you. But how do these canapés pair with a banana daiquiri? Well, first off, I gotta say, without tooting my own horn too much, this is the best banana daiquiri you will ever have. And like its canapé partner, it has a way of being both decadent whilst also refreshing. So therefore, I'm giving this pairing two thumbs up. If you like the channel, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Tell us what you'd like to see. Please leave any suggestions for future videos in the comments below. Full recipes will be included in the link in the video description. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Consuming Cinema. And don't forget to join us next week when we make a pairing from Wedding Crashers. Thank you for watching. Cream free. Cafeteria free. La 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 free.